The Fisherman and the Jinn. Abdul was a poor fisherman. He had been sitting by the river with his net, but had not been able to catch any fish the whole day. He said sadly, It is getting late. If I don't catch any fish soon, I will have nothing to eat tonight. His tummy was already grumbling. Just then, he felt something getting caught in the net. It must be a really big fish, he said happily and he tugged hard. With a lot of effort, he pulled the net out. He was surprised to find an old, strange brass jar instead of a fish. He was curious and so he opened the jar. Immediately a lot of white smoke came out of the jar. Once the smoke went away, he saw a huge ferocious looking genie in front of him. It was an evil genie called Jin. Jin said to him, I have sworn to kill the first man I see when I am released from this jar. Now you must prepare to die. Poor Abdul stood trembling. Please let me go, he cried. I set you free. I helped you. You can't kill me. But Jin would not listen. Abdul knew his only hope was to trick Jin. So he said, Okay, you can kill me if you must, but before you do, will you tell me how a big genie like you can fit into such a small jar? Jin laughed. I am a powerful genie. I can be taller than the mountains or smaller than a little rat if I want. He boasted. I don't believe you. Go into the jar and prove it to me, replied Abdul. Immediately, Jin became very small and vanished into the jar in a puff of smoke. Before he realized, Abdul quickly closed the jar tight. He had trapped Jin in the jar again. Quickly he picked up the jar and threw it far away, back into the river. He never wanted to see it ever again. Thus, the clever fisherman outwitted the evil genie. The Clever Falcon
In a faraway kingdom, there once lived a king called Yunnan. He had a beautiful white pet falcon that went everywhere he did. King Yunnan was fond of hunting. He and his friends would ride their horses into a nearby forest in search of wonderful creatures. On one such hunting trip, they saw a gazelle. After it, they cried, let's capture it. The gazelle bounded quickly through the trees. The king, eager to catch it, rode faster and faster and deeper and deeper into the mysterious forest. However, the gazelle escaped. Looking around, the king suddenly realized that he had left his friends far behind. He was lost. Only his falcon had followed him. Now he was all alone in the forest with just his falcon and his horse for company. By now, the king was feeling very thirsty. He said to himself, I wonder if I can find some water here. After searching for a long time, he finally came upon a small, sparkling pond. Relieved, he dipped his palms into the water and was just about to drink it. when his falcon suddenly swooped down and made him drop the water. Annoyed, he bent to pick up some more water to drink. Again, the bird flew at him squawking loudly and flapping its wings very hard. Now King Yunnan was very angry. Silly bird! How dare you bother me! Can't you see how thirsty I am? He shouted. He pulled his sword out and was determined to kill this bird that was irritating him. Just then, the bird flew up to the trees. The king looked up as he waved his sword wildly. To his surprise, he noticed that the trees above were full of poisonous snakes that were now hissing dangerously at having been disturbed. The pond didn't have any water. It was just made of the poison from the snakes. It was then that the king realized that his falcon had saved his life. He was ashamed that he had nearly killed his beloved pet. I am sorry, little friend, he said softly as he stroked it. The king then followed his clever falcon as it led the way out of the forest. He cared for the bird for the rest of his life. The Lazy Donkey In a land far away lived a kind and hard-working farmer. He had a special power to understand the language of animals. One evening, he heard the donkey and the bull talking to each other. He hid behind a tree and listened.
The bull was complaining to his friend, the donkey. I'm so tired, he said. I worked so hard in the fields today. Why do you work so much? asked the donkey. Look at me. All I do the whole day is eat, sleep, and enjoy myself. The bull thought the donkey was very lucky. What do I do to live like you? he asked sadly. Well, I always pretend to be ill. Pretend not to eat your food, moan and roll on the ground as if you are in pain. Then the farmer won't take you to the fields, the donkey advised. The next morning, the bull did as the donkey told him. But the farmer, who had heard everything, was determined to teach the lazy donkey a lesson. He went to the donkey and said, Since the bull is ill, you will have to help me today. Poor donkey puffed and panted as he did all the work. By evening, he was aching all over. The bull, however, was cheerful. He came to his friend and thanked him for his brilliant idea. I had a wonderful day today. I think I will fool the farmer again tomorrow, he said. The donkey was worried. He didn't want to toil so hard for one more day. He quickly said, Oh no, you mustn't do that. Just today I heard the farmer say that if you were sick for longer, he would sell you to the butcher. bull was scared. He didn't want that to happen. He made up his mind that he was going to be a good bull and work hard again the next day. The farmer, who had again hidden behind a tree to listen to their conversation, smiled to himself. He went up to his donkey and quietly said, So, donkey, I hope you have learned your lesson never to be lazy again. The donkey lowered his head in shame. He had indeed learned his lesson. The Sultan's Third Son Once there lived a powerful sultan who had ruled over a large kingdom for many years. However, he had no sons to rule the land after him. At the advice of a wise man, he gave each of his three queens a special fruit. In time, the first and the second each gave birth to a son. Unfortunately, the third queen did not, and so the sultan banished her into the forest.
Many days later, the queen gave birth to a boy in the forest. She named him Kudadit. Kudadit was a smart boy. He grew up into a strong young man and was a skilled fighter. One day, his mother told him about his real father, the Sultan. However, the boy said, Let me prove my worth before I tell him who I am. And so, Kudadid joined his father's army. With his courage and cleverness, he soon became very popular and was the Sultan's favorite. One day, the two princes, who had gone hunting, suddenly went missing. A massive search began. Brave Kudadid, too, went looking for them in the forest. There in the forest, he found a beautiful young girl crying below the trees. Who are you? Why are you weeping? He asked. I'm the princess of the neighboring land, she said amid sobs. A horrid giant captured me. But save yourself. Run away from here before he finds you. But Kadadith was the bravest warrior of the land. He declared, I will fight this monster. He will never hurt anyone ever again. When the giant returned, Kudadath attacked him. The giant roared and yelled, but after a long fight, Kudadath defeated him and killed him. The giant has kept many people captive in a cave nearby. Let's set them free, said the princess. The two of them went to the giant's secret cave and freed the prisoners. Among the prisoners were the two princes. The Sultan was very pleased to see his two sons. He was ready to reward Kudadith. When the boy finally told him, I am the son of the queen you banished many years ago. The Sultan was overjoyed at the news. The third queen was brought back to the kingdom from the forest. Kudadith married the princess and they lived happily in the palace. Hunt for the camel. Once a traveler lost his camel. He searched frantically for it all around the place. But nobody had seen it or could tell him where it was. Finally, he came upon three wise men. He asked them, Have you seen a camel anywhere along the road from where you have come? The first man asked him, Is your camel blind in one eye? Yes, it is replied the traveler. The second man asked, Is your camel lame in one leg? 
The traveler said excitedly, "Yes, yes, it is." The third man inquired, "Was your camel carrying a bag of grain on one side and honey on the other side?" "Yes, it was," said the traveler. "That is my camel. Where did you see it? Please tell me." "We're sorry, but we didn't see your camel," they said. Traveler was angry. He didn't believe them and took them to the king's court. There he cried, "Your Majesty, these men describe my camel perfectly, yet they say they haven't seen it. They are hiding my camel." But the men pleaded innocence. We had nothing to do with the camel's disappearance. One said. We knew that the camel was blind because the grass of only one side of the road was eaten. We knew that it was lame because we saw that one hoofprint was different from the rest. The other added. The third man continued. We guessed it was carrying grain and honey. On one side of the road, we saw that grain had been split, and on the other side, there were traces of honey. Hearing this, the king was convinced that the three men were not thieves. He was very impressed with their intelligence and offered them to be his courtiers. The traveler realized that he too had been mistaken about the men. He apologized to them and went away to look for his camel.